Barely 10 kilometers from the international border of India and Pakistan lies the Shajrana village in the Fazilka district of Punjab. Basic facilities like water, education and healthcare have been a struggle here. Situated in a complex geopolitical zone where access and mobility is a daily struggle for its residents, Shajrana is representative of the neglect that most border villages have faced for decades. And now Ajay, just like hundreds of other farmers in the region, has been robbed of his primary occupation of agriculture. What appears to be snow is actually a thin layer of salt that has been plaguing the once fertile agricultural land of Punjab, the state hailed as the granary of India. With almost 82% of land under agriculture, Punjab produces 20% of the country's wheat. But for the past 40 years, farmers in parts of the state have been unable to grow anything because of the high salinity of its groundwater. Ajay hasn't witnessed any farming since his birth. While his ancestors once grew cotton and millet, his father today laments the 40 hectares of land that is unable to produce even 4 kilograms of rice. Impelled by the Green Revolution, it was the 50s when Punjab's booming agricultural economy started gaining momentum. The introduction of high yielding seeds, mechanized farming, pesticides, and fertilizers changed the grammar of farming in India. Dr. O.P. Chaudhary from the Punjab Agricultural University, one of the pioneering bodies of the Green Revolution in the 60s, tells us how the focus on higher yield eventually came at the cost of the land. Dr. Kalkat, who used to be the director of agriculture, he uh, used the jail facility, jail inmates, to make small packets of that Mexican varieties of rice and wheat and dis to distribute it to the farmers in throughout the state. And then uh, once they uh, sniffed very high economic returns out of uh, high yielding rice and wheat varieties and they started growing more and more of uh, these uh, crops and then uh, rice took over all the three crops, all of the three crops, be it maize, groundnut, cotton in the southwestern part because of the good economic returns and a lot of water, it, it was very water intensive crop. And because of that, it took toll on the soil and water resources with time and uh, the soil got depleted, the groundwater got depleted. Ripples of the Green Revolution can be felt more intensely today, when intensive irrigation practices have rendered close to 42% of the state's groundwater either saline or sodic. This happens because once the water from waterlogged fields evaporates, it leaves salt in the soil, making it impossible to grow crops. Uh, in some areas like Muxar and Mulot and Fadilka, the waterlogging has started coming up. Why? Because you are not dis extracting any groundwater. You are, you are using surface water conveyed through canals time and again, and rather you have now shifted from cotton which is less water requiring crop, 4 to 5 irrigation, to a rice which is more water, water requiring crop, uh, needing around 20 to 25 uh, irrigations in a season. So you are uh, filling the already filled glass. So you are not dry, withdrawing, you are recharging. Prabjit Singh from the Guru Angad Dev Veterinary and Animal Sciences University in Ludhiana, Punjab's biggest city, has come to be quite a local hero here. 
ठीक ठाक हो सत श्रीकाल जी ठीक चल रहा चिंगा पिछले ट्रायल भी बहुत सक्सेसफुल फॉर द लास्ट 10 इयर्स ही हैज बीन स्पियरहेडिंग एफर्ट्स टू सेव लाइवलीहुड्स ऑफ पंजाब्स फार्मर्स बाय हेल्पिंग देम ट्रांजिशन टू श्रिम फार्मिंग Growing fish in a non-coastal state like Punjab is not only uncommon but almost traditionally unheard of. But the idea here is to make productive use of existing inland saline areas by turning them into aquaculture ponds. As a result, what were till recently zero earning saline lands are now helping farmers earn 60 to 70,000 rupees per acre during the harvesting season. Basically, we are not adding anything. We are not putting any kind of stress on the land. It's a waterland land, and the, if if you go down, that you will find water just five or ten feet below. You have the water. So we are just and sometimes the water is seeping at, automatically. We are not aggravating the problem of water logging. We are not adding any water. We are doing in already existing saline water. We are culturing our organism for the livelihood of these farmers. For the past two years, Raju Narang has been successfully practicing aquaculture. Sajrana wale gam jo is area ki log hain, wo bahut jada khush hain ki jo pichle 100 saal se lagalo kuch nahi ho raha tha yahan pe, wahan pe ek ek jaise aasha ki kiran hume dikhai di ji. Uske liye matlab jinga hona university ki guideline se jo matlab shrimp huya hai, jo vinami huye hain. उसके लिए यहाँ के फार्मर जो लोकल एरिया है वो बहुत ज़्यादा खुश है और हमें वो हमारा डैमो देखने भी आए और लोग अभी अवेयर इतने हो गए कि वो अपने इतना सलाइन एरिया में करना चाह रहे हैं Sourced from coastal states like Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, and Tamil Nadu, these shrimp seeds are released in dugout ponds under strict biosecurity protocols. Garvasu assures us. Since 2014, when trials began across one hectare of saline areas, today more than 100 farmers are practicing aquaculture over 450 hectares in the Fazilka district alone. No, no, it's not. It's not the good solution. It is the only f- a solution because there's, when there's water, there cannot be any crop. I sh- I I don't want to advocate that we should create salt water ponds, but that is the need of the hour. And then. we we never advocate that we should add salts it's not recommended the only thing is if there is salt problem and we have water logging problem occurring together in some areas then the only way forward is saline water agriculture turning natural agricultural land into salt water ponds artificially however can have disastrous consequences on the ecology of a region from biodiversity loss to contamination of water tables Even in coastal countries like Bangladesh and Vietnam where the water is naturally salty the lucrative value of shrimp has been driving communities to pump salt into paddy fields In states like Punjab however where groundwater salinity is largely man-made Garvasu has been advocating shrimp farming only in saline affected areas The motivation is not profiteering at the cost of the environment but an effort to turn adversity into opportunity the good agriculture land should not be converted into shrimp farming because the adjoining areas can also become salinized if it is carried in the middle of a good uh, good land or something like by deliberately pumping the water saline water from the deep so only where the water table is high and where the soil is already saline water is already saline let us do shrimp farming Soil salinity can be reversed but it takes time and is expensive. Better irrigation systems, setting up desalting plants and leaching are plausible solutions. But OP Chaudhary points out how the twin problems of groundwater salinity and water logging poses a challenge in this region. So uh, we should reduce the salt of uh, salt content of soil or water wherever possible. The but the problem is when there is water logging you cannot do leaching because otherwise if the water w- table would have been deep you could have done leaching but if water table is not deep it is just on the surface or near the surface you cannot employ leaching in that case either we should go for uh, tolerant crops or 
we should you know extract some amount of ground water to uh, to to use it as a conjunctive use option along with canal water Ajay recently made the switch from agriculture to aquaculture the transition cost him 7 to 8 lakh rupees for every acre During the shrimp season that lasts from May to October an acre of land can produce about 4000 kilograms of shrimp at 250 to 350 rupees per kg shrimp fetches him more than any other crop in the conventional cropping system however it was a lean season for shrimp farmers last year while ajay managed to break even he's worried about making the business profitable moreover he is still debt ridden ਹੁਣ ਐਵੇਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਜ਼ਮੀਨ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ 40 ਕਿੱਲੇ ਆ ਜੀ ਇੰਨੇ 40 ਕਿੱਲੇ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਖਰਚਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਮਦਦ ਕਰੇ ਉਹਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਦੇ ਸਾਰੀ ਜ਼ਮੀਨ ਕਰ ਸਕਨੇ ਆ ਜੀ ਐਵੇਂ ਪੈਸੇ ਖਰਚਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਫॉर द ਟਾਈਮ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਦੋ ਐਨ ਅਸ਼ੋਰਡ ਇਨਕਮ ਐਨ ਅ ਟੇਸਟ ਫॉर ਸ਼ਰਿੰਪ ਇਜ਼ ਸਲੋਲੀ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਗਿੰਗ ਬੈਕ ਸਮਾਈਲਸ ਇਨ ਥੀਸ ਪਾਰਟਸ ਆਫ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਜੰਬ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਜਿੰਗਾ ਦੀ ਖੇਤੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਜੀ ਉਦੋਂ ਦੇ ਖਾਣ ਕੋਣ ਲੱਗ ਜਾਈਦਾ ਜੀ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਜੀ ਹੁਣ 2 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਦਾ ਹੋਣ ਲੱਗ ਗਿਆ ਜੀ ਜਿੰਗਾ ਜੀ ਥੈਂਕਸ ਫॉर ਵਾਚਿੰਗ ਈਕੋ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਲਾਈਕ ਦਿਸ ਸਟੋਰੀ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਗਿਵ ਅਸ ਅ ਥਮਸ ਅਪ ਐਂਡ ਸਬ